I have not seen her. Do I give a kiss or do I not give a kiss? Hotel owner Aphrodite Vati is gearing up for the summer tourist season. We're at my family's hotel. Here's our pool. Our taverna is uh, right on the beach. This is in the village of Molivos. But this year is like no other. Tourism accounts for 20% of Greece's economy, which is why it's desperate to win visitors back in a very 2020 way. Because behind your every ideal experience, there's a complete protocol for your safety in action. Destination Greece, health first. Typically, this would be 100% full right now. So unfortunately, as you can see, things are quite difficult uh, this year. Uh, we don't have as many guests, and this is because of the coronavirus. No, that's OK. <laughs> that's fine. For couple Des and Crizia, Lesbos is their idea of paradise, especially after months in lockdown in the UK. We can come for 20 years. Back in the day, we picked it out of a brochure. And the phrase was, Molivos is just beautiful. And I said to Chris here, this is where we need to go. And we have been coming every year ever since. It's just wonderful. And I think this is probably true of many Greek islands, in, in that lots of people go and they find mm -hmm. their Greek island. And we found ours. Families and nature lovers come here for the sunshine and beaches. And in recent years, it's become a draw card for lesbian tourists because the word originates from here. Oh, I'm proud to be lesbian. <laughs> no, don't use that. <laughs> but there's been an influx of people coming here since 2015 for another reason. That year, at the height of the Syrian civil war, over a million people crossed into Europe. Lesbos was at the epicentre of what became known as the refugee crisis. But in fact, these people are asylum seekers. It's not illegal to arrive in a foreign country and claim asylum. We started having uh, one boat every other day arrive uh, throughout the summer and this uh, ended up reaching to about eight to nine boats a day. Uh, arriving directly in our business. The crisis was major news and Lesbos's reputation as a refugee island would come to stick. Yeah, there's a lot of negative publicity in the UK. Uh, UNICEF run an advert for to raise money for charity and it starts off with, this is Lesbos and they show pictures of lots of refugees. But actually, that's not what Lesbos is. This is, is Lesbos, where you are, what you're experiencing. 2015 was a year that we'll never forget. The crisis inspired Aphrodite to go into politics. She's now a deputy mayor and the local tourism champion. The refugee situation in 2015 had, as a result, to negatively impact uh, tourism. This had as a result for us to be up to 80% down in revenue, um, which was a catastrophe. With the pandemic hitting revenue even further, she's fighting to change the island's image. People think that the island is overflowing with refugees and this is unfair. I think a great injustice has been done to the island of Lesbos. But locals are divided on the issue of asylum seekers. So, this is it. Melinda McCrosty is an Australian who's lived on Lesbos for most of her life. It's um, quite disturbing. They knew exactly where to put it so that it did the most harm. Her property has just been vandalised. She thinks because of rising tensions. It's also down here on the side of the house. Are you scared? Nervous. I'm nervous. So these are the new wooden windows that we put in this year. 
that are now ruined. Kind of like blood. Yeah, I think that's why they choose red. Melinda owns a popular restaurant and a string of holiday rentals like this one. Yep, it's quite um, yucky seeing that there's somebody that's so angry with you that wants to wreck your property. What other attacks have you experienced? We've had one other house that's uh, been painted with um, red. We've had our tires um, slashed twice. Uh, we've had our car, our personal car even scratched and disturbed. There's other things that have happened, but they might be just coincidences, like our motorbike was stolen. Why do you think they're angry? They're angry because um, we've been helping the refugees. I think they just don't understand that this thing, the refugees aren't going away, so it's not bad to help them. There's so much misinformation that's coming out to everybody and people are jealous or angry. It doesn't help that there's no tourism this year, so um, that makes people even angrier. Melinda doesn't know who's attacking her property, and she's not the only one to be targeted. Εγώ μεγάλωσα εδώ πέρα. Είναι δυνατόν τώρα. Έχει δει ποιο θα κάνει αυτά. Όχι. Τώρα πρέπει να βάλω κάμερε παντού. Ξέρει πόσο κοστίζει. Ναι. Το κάνει. Εδώ το κάνω. Θα το κάνει. Ναι. Μάτσε. Καλά να είσαι. Ευχαριστώ. Τα παιδιά τι κάνουν, ναι. Μεγάλο. The thing is, you don't really know if any of that is true. Melinda's restaurant has been closed all year because of coronavirus and this is the first night of reopening. You want uh, bottle water or you want tap water? Bottle water. Water, yeah. Just like Aphrodite, she needs income from tourists to survive the summer. So what's an Australian doing owning a restaurant in this? Oh, actually, it's like a movie. My mother, they sometimes call her the real Shirley Valentine because she actually came here uh, on holiday, met the Greek fisherman, married him, and we're still here, so I grew up here in Greece. Um, and this restaurant, uh, we've had it for 26 years. I had another restaurant before this. Five years ago, in this very spot, the refugee crisis literally arrived on her doorstep and the Coast Guard would bring everybody to this harbour. Wait, 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 stop, stop. Wait, wait, wait. When the people arrived out of the sea and the cold and they were just sitting there in the freezing cold, I didn't feel I had a choice. I just had to help. Over 200,000 asylum seekers came through this small town compelled to do something, she organized a group of locals to help. The first thing we tried to give them is really sweet hot tea, just to warm them up. Soon enough, Melinda found herself running an official NGO called Starfish Foundation. Lots of volunteers came over and lots of NGOs came to come and help. Starfish themselves, just us, we've had over 1,500 volunteers. As numbers on the island grew, so did local concerns about the impact on tourism. If Molly was here, they didn't want them. There's actually places here that if they think you're a volunteer, they don't serve you. Have you been to this restaurant before? Does one have to choose between humanity and tourism? Well. People are choosing between the two, but I don't think one should. I think it's part and parcel. Today, there are an estimated 15,000 asylum seekers living on Lesbos, but you won't find them here on the harbour foreshore. A 
Nine hours drive south of Molly Voss is the largest refugee camp in Europe, Moria. Built to house just under 3,000 people, right now it's bursting at the seams. It's hard to get official population numbers as residents spill out into the surrounding olive groves. The lawless, sprawling mess is known as the jungle. Don't put the plastic bag on your head. That's not good. Don't, no, 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 it's not good. Hello. Hello. Today, Melinda's with her volunteers handing out care packages to new mothers. Okay, so this is our baby box team. Um, I've been volunteering on and off now for four years and it doesn't matter how much time I spend inside Moria, I cannot get used to the shocking, degrading, inhumane conditions and the chaos and the bureaucracy. It is beyond description. The camp is in lockdown because of COVID-19. So the asylum seekers aren't allowed to leave anymore. Here we go. Let's wash our hands together. Supposedly for fear of bringing the virus into the camp. Let me help, oh, let me help you. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's heavy. We're very scared that if the virus does get inside Moria, we will have a lot of problems. Even before the lockdown, entry restrictions would have stopped our cameras from accessing the main part of Moria Camp. This area, however, the so-called jungle, is a free-for-all. I would probably say, if I'm not mistaken, this is the second largest town in the whole of um, Lesbos. Yeah. Kind of scary if you think about it. So these are all the houses that they've made themselves. But where with no money where do they get everything they steal it therefore that creates a problem with the local community because they're actually stealing from people the local people and from their own personal things down the road from the camp is the village of moria perhaps nowhere else on the island are tensions between locals and the asylum seekers so high Village President Yanni receives constant complaints from locals. Οι καταστροφές των κτημάτων, οι φωτιές, το κόψιμο των δέντρων, οι λαϊλασίες εξοχικών σπιτιών, οι κλοπές φρούτων και λαχανικών, το σφάξιμο των ζώων, πουλερικών, Ό,τι μπορείτε να φανταστείτε. Είναι μια κατοικία στην οποία είχαν μπει αρκετέ φορέ, αφαίρεσαν ρούχα απλωμένα, παπούτσια, διάφορα άλλα αντικείμενα κλπ. Μέχρι που ο ιδιοκτήτη απεφάσισε να λάβει πρόσθετα μέτρα. Tourism isn't a concern here. Agriculture is the main source of income. Χαιρετούμε τον αγρότη τον Πέτρο. Χαιρετούμε. Πώ πάει η δουλειά σήμερα. Μπράβο, μπράβο. Ε, το τελευταίο διάστημα έχουμε αρπαγές, κλοπές και λοιπά, επισκέψεις έχουμε, τακτικές. Κάθε μέρα. Κάθε, κάθε μέρα. μέρα κάθε καθημερινό μέρα. φαινόμενο, δυστυχώς. Ε, υπομονή θα κάνουμε λιγάκι, ε, μήπως καλυτερέψουν τα πράγματα. Δεν γίνεται. Πρόκειται. Είμαι λιγάκι αισιόδοξο ότι κάτι καλύτερο μπορεί να γίνει. Δεν μπορούμε να κάνουμε τίποτα. Εμείς. Πρέπει να είμαστε λιγάκι αισιόδοξοι και να προσπαθούμε για το καλύτερο. Petros is a small-scale vegetable and livestock farmer who says his livelihood is under threat from the asylum seekers. He wants the government to close the camp and move its inhabitants somewhere else. 
Πολιτική. Ε, ζητάμε ότι η πολιτεία να λάβει τα μέτρα. Όπω είπαν ότι θα κλείσει η μόρια, πρέπει να κλείσει η μόρια. Δεν γίνεται η κατάσταση αυτή να είναι ελεύθεροι άνθρωποι να γυρίζουν να μπουν σε ξένα κουράπια, σε ξένα σπίτια. Το ζητάμε, δεν ζητάμε τίποτα άλλο. Άνθρωποι είμαστε, δεν είμαστε ραζιστέ ποτέ. As Greece opens its borders to tourists, the thousands living inside Moria camp remain locked in. Unable to film inside, Take one, action. we have a team of asylum seekers to film for us. Yasser interview, take four, action. Yasser is 17 years old. Danger, action. And Nazanin is 22. Both fled Afghanistan from the Taliban. They're learning to be citizen journalists to show the outside world what life is like inside the camp. I'm in the jungle of Mori camp and if you ask some of the refugees about it, what is the most dangerous place in the camp, they will definitely tell it's jungle. It's so dangerous for them to go and walking in this dark jungle. Would you dare to do that? Safety is the concernable issue in the Moria camp. Every night uh, it's happening, fighting in this camp and people are being killed. Here is the most uh, dangerous place in Moria that uh, most of the fightings are taking place in this area. As you see that uh, there are uh, sword and knives hit on the ISO boxes. Moria is famous in dirty toilets. As usual, it has no water, and if you see the bottles here, they are because of uh, the water that all the time is going. You can see there are many children here walking around, running here, and playing in these conditions. Dirt, trashes, and very bad conditions. We have to wait in the long lines to get our food three times a day, breakfast, dinner, and lunch. I'm living here with my three sisters and my mother, so totally five people are living in this tiny, small space. You can see that how tiny and small is here. Since March, Moria was in lockdown and the refugees were all stuck in the Moria camp because of coronavirus. The locals, they see the refugees like a problem. موجود موزی هستش و حتی دید دیدگاهشون دیدی که به مهاجر دارن واقعا که باید به انسان نگاه نمی کنه انگار یک چیزی چیزی که نباید اینجا باشه Decisions about Moria camp are made in Athens but the island's top politician has made a name for himself campaigning against asylum seekers. Costas Mudzuris is a member of the Conservative New Democracy Party, which came to power last year on an anti-migrants platform. Μετανάστες. Εδώ 
Ο οποίο θέλει. Τι είπατε. Ό,τι νομίζει του. Ο καθένα είναι ελεύθερο να έχει την άποψη. Ο καθένα. Όχι, θα έρθει με θα κρίνει εκείνη που θέλει. Ο καθένα έχει ελεύθερη άποψη. Η μα είναι αυτή. Εμεί δεν σέβονται τα πάντα τα δικά του γιατί δεν σέβονται εμά. Ο άνθρωπο ο οποίο δεν είναι άνθρωπο. Πρώτα άνθρωπο. Αυτέ οι πανικιέ μου μακαρίζουν τι πλήσει μα. Εμεί πήγαμε να το κάνουμε στι δικέ του. Μπορεί να πα με τη δικιά του να κάνει κάτι. Με του δάμε του. Απόψε σε ένα ήταν κακή δεν. Πιο καλό debate δεν μπορούσα να τα βρείτε. The Greek island of Lesbos is divided over the issue of asylum seekers. Some see it as their duty to provide safe haven to people fleeing war and persecution. While others, like the outspoken governor, see them as a problem. Our local producer Nicolia braves an interview to ask him why there's tension. Lesbos erupted in protests earlier this year. Asylum seekers turned out against their abysmal conditions, while Lesbos locals protested and then clashed with police over the government's plans to build a new permanent camp. And the governor, he was out there protesting against his own party. <laughs> Just how Greece is guarding its borders is controversial. Since the new government came to power last year, asylum seeker boats from Turkey have found the crossing more hazardous. The government says it stopped more than 10,000 people entering by sea this year, but it won't say how it's doing it. Greece's Coast Guard is reportedly harassing and sabotaging boats, pushing them back into Turkish waters by making waves or towing them. Actions the Greek government denies. In March, locals hurled abuse at a boat of arriving asylum seekers and refused to let them come ashore. We've got 50,000 of you here. 50,000! Go back! Bobby! The government has also introduced controversial new asylum laws which it says is clearing the backlog of cases, but which asylum seekers and advocates say is an impossible process designed to see cases fail. The plan for Moria is to reduce the camp's population, but the governor wants more. <laughs> Πιστεύετε ότι οι τουρίστες σταμάτησαν να έρχονται στην Ελλάδα εξαιτίας προσφυγικού Στην μέσα σημεία της Λέσβο Λέσβο, να Στο Μόλιβο, ας πούμε θεωρείτε ότι... Αλλά τώρα είναι ο κορονοϊός Να Και πόσο σημαντικό είναι ο τουρισμός για τη Ιωνησία Όχι, και ο τουρισμός είναι συμπληρωματικός Δεν είναι η Ερώδος, η Κέρκυρα, 
Σαντορίνη, που ζουν από το ζωή. Εδώ υπάρχει μια οικονομική ζωή, η οποία πολύ ευχαρίστω συμπληρώνεται από το ζωή. Despite COVID-19 spreading throughout Europe's summer, Greece, desperate for tourist dollars, reopened the country to outside visitors. The gamble doesn't look to have paid off. Tourist numbers are way down. But coronavirus infections, many imported by visitors, are rising. On Lesbos, the problems cut deeper. With the pandemic and the lingering refugee crisis, locals worry about their futures. Helping the refugees has come with a cost. I live in a village of about a thousand people where I was brought up in. Most of the village are my friends, they don't speak to me anymore. Some people said to me, well, stop giving them sandwiches, stop giving them bottles of water, because that's why they're coming over, because we're looking after them. And I'm pretty sure that nobody wanting to travel from Turkey and risk their lives to get here would come over just because of the sandwiches and the bottle of water that we were giving them. The one story that stuck to me throughout the refugee crisis was uh, a family that came and uh, they sat down on some sun beds to relax. And when they got up to leave and they started walking away, my father saw that they had left behind a pair of keys. So uh, my father quickly grabbed the keys and ran after them and said, sir, sir, you forgot your keys. And the father turned around and said, uh, no, I didn't. We left them behind on purpose. We don't have any need for them anymore. They belong to a home that doesn't exist anymore. And we have these keys up in the reception and it's a reminder to us, but also now we have been put into a, a position where we ourselves look at our own keys in symbolically wondering, will we have to leave our keys behind too to go and find work somewhere else one day? Because if, if tourism doesn't pick up, there's no future for our children here.